Welcome back, all of you great talks. I hope you guys are still ready, and I hope I hope that you guys are still amped up for this entire session. We are doing physical science with Tracy, and we all know when Tracy's in the studio, there's a whole lot of energy. So I hope you guys are ready. Calculators, every single thing that you guys are going to be needing for today's session, I hope it is already packed up. And before the ad break, Tracy just gave us some interesting tips on how to make it through to our exams. Practice, 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 write all of your units down, all of your calculations, whatever you guys are going to be needing, make sure that it is written down on a piece of paper so that when you get into that exam room, you remember each and every single thing. While my time for talking is up, because I only got a minute to talk, Tracy gets a whole day to talk, so it's fine. I'm going to hand over to Tracy so that she can talk. Tracy? Yes. Thanks. It might be because I know the science. Probably. Not because I'm pretty, it's just because I know the science. Okay, I'll take that as a okay. compliment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to try to say this name. Minenche. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay, anyway, so such a nice question. Grade 12, before you look at this and go, oh, no, man, this is grade 10 or grade 11 work. It is, but you are going to get asked this. Okay, this is stoichiometry. This is chemical calculations. And from experience, I know that you guys really, really, really struggle with this. So pay attention because I have a sneaking suspicion that some of you haven't seen this in months, okay? In fact, you probably haven't seen this since you did this in grade 11 and maybe even grade 10, who knows? So pay attention. So it says to us, if 2,4 grams of potassium chlorate is heated, it produces potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Now we're quite nice in that we give you the equation. Sometimes they're not going to do that. So if you remember in grade 10, you started learning about how to put formulas together and there's a whole list of common ions that you need to know. Chlorate is one of them. The chlorate is actually ClO3 minus. And remember potassium is plus, which is why it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, when it comes to the chemical reaction, there's, they could have given it to you without having balanced it. This one I know is balanced because I have numbers in it, the two, the two, and the three. But let's just double check because balancing the equation is really important. So if I look at this and I go, I have um, two potassiums, two potassiums, great. Two chlorines, two chlorines because I multiplied in. Then I have two times three oxygen, so that's six oxygens. And I go three times two oxygens, that's six oxygens, it's balanced, perfect. Okay, so now I'm just going to rub all of that out so it's not so difficult, so it's not so messy. And now they say, what mass of potassium chloride will be formed? So let's write the equation down again because I'm going to write a whole bunch of things here. So this is how I would set this out. Okay, and this is all about making sure that your teacher knows what you're doing. Now, they said to us that we had 2,47 grams of potassium chloride, and they wanted to know, sorry, potassium chlorate. There we go. Ooh, yes, that's bit, yeah, and that's a three. So you've got to write that down probably, otherwise it's not going to work. And they wanted to know how much potassium chloride to, that you needed. That's fine. So now we go, okay, we can't compare mass and mass because one substance is bigger than the other. So with a question like this, the first thing we always do is we go, well, I need to have a balanced chemical equation. I do. Perfect. Step one, done. Balanced chemical equation. Step two, and now I'm going to do it in yellow so it makes it easier, or whatever color it is, I think it's yellow, to make it easier. Step two is to now go, let's put down the mole ratio. So this reacts in a two, 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 three ratio. Okay, because I might need that later. So for the first reaction question, I don't need the three, but we're not going to worry about it. The mole ratio means that for every two moles of um, potassium chlorate, I make two moles of potassium chloride, and then I make three moles of oxygen. 
This mole ratio means that I need to work in moles. Now I have the mass of the potassium chlorate, but I need the number of moles of potassium chlorate. So now I work out the number of moles of the substance I was given in the first place, which is the potassium chlorate, okay? Then we remind ourselves and we go, okay, number of moles means that it's mass divided by molar mass. So I actually need to start off, I need to find the molar mass of the potassium chlorate. Now, I've been teaching for a very long time, so I know, much to my horror, it's sometimes a little bit of useless information, I know the mass of potassium out of my head, I know chlorine and I know oxygen, we don't expect you to. So, where do we get it from? We go to our periodic table, and we go find, let's find potassium, oh no, there we go, that's what I want, potassium is over here, oh no, no, stop it, see the periodic table doesn't want to be used. But it's your best friend. Potassium is 39. Okay, look, according to my key, the bottom of the bottom number is my relative atomic mass, which is my molar mass. So potassium is 39, chlorine is 35 and a half, and oxygen is 16. I need to put all of those together. So we go back to here and we go find potassium was 39. Okay. Chlorine was 35 and a half, okay, and oxygen is 16, but there's three oxygens in each molecule, okay, and now we use our calculators, okay, because we know that <clears throat> we don't want to make a silly mistake because we tried to do it in our head, so 39 plus 35 plus, and now it's 3 times 16, gives me 100, no, ah, oh, that was silly, Hopefully you'll saw I said 35, but it should be 35 and a half. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. Times three, no, no, no plus, plus three times 16. Okay, grade 12s, your calculator will give you the answer of whatever you put in, okay? I had a fight with a, with a kid today. He was like, no, but my calculator gives me this answer. And I went, yes, because you put in the wrong stuff. And he goes, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. And then I said, so what did you put in? Your, and he started, and he had put in the wrong stuff. So your calculator will spew out an answer to whatever you put in, okay? Your calculator can't give you a wrong answer because it doesn't do that. It's very clever. But it can give you the wrong answer if you put the wrong stuff in, okay? So be careful. So we, that gives me 122, okay? So 122 grams per mole. So now I know the molar mass, but I need number of moles. Okay, so remember, number of moles is, okay, and I, I, I'm going to do this deliberately. If you watch what I'm doing, I'm saying number of moles of potassium chlorate, because I want to remind myself what I'm working with, because we use the same equations over and over again. So number of moles is mass over molar mass. We had 2,47 this is 122 grams per mole. I absolutely can't do that in my head. Oh, no, delete there. Stop. There we go. 2.47 divided by 122. And it gives me 0.02. Uh, okay, we're going to 0, 0.2. 0, 0.02 moles. Okay. So far, so good. Now we go back to the equation. And we go, well, I know I've got, now I've got 0, 0.02 moles. Okay, I need to know how, what mass of potassium chloride, I can only work out the mass of potassium chloride if I know how many moles of potassium chloride I have. So now I need to use this mole ratio. Okay, I need to use that mole ratio. So watch what we're going to do here. Now I need, and I would actually set this up in two columns, but we don't have enough space other than this. All right, really tiny, and then of course you won't be able to see it, which de defeats the object of the whole exercise. So. Number of moles of potassium chloride is equal to the moles that we worked out from the potassium chlorate times by the mole ratio. Now, the mole ratio, I teach my kids a little thing called want over got. Okay. Want is the num is the what I'm looking for. In this case, it's the potassium chloride. What I've got is what I started with, which was the potassium chlorate. And the potassium chloride had a balancing number of two in front of it. So that's what I put on top. That's my want. 
the potassium chlorate also had a balancing number of 2, so I put a 2 here. I know 2 over 2 is 1. It's actually a 1 to 1 ratio, but they are looking for that 2 over 2. So that means that this is created 0, 0, 0, 0,2 moles of potassium chloride, but I haven't finished yet. Yes, these questions go on for a long time. They wanted the mass of the potassium chloride. So now, remember, over here, I'm just going to do it here. Let's do it here. Number of moles is mass over molar mass. So mass is number of moles times molar mass. Okay. So now I can actually do this in one step. Look what I'm going to do. Mass is number of moles times molar mass. My number of moles is 0, 0, 2. And now I'm actually going to calculate the molar mass in the question. So it was potassium, which is 39, and my chlorine, which was 35 and a half. Okay, so watch. 39 plus 35.5, which is 74.5. That's, that's big M. I'm going to times that by 0 0.2, 0 0.02, and I get 1,49 grams okay now what you need to get from this grade 12s is that the number of moles of the potassium chloride and the potassium chlorate is the same but their mass isn't the same because actually the potassium chloride is significantly smaller okay it doesn't have three oxygens in it. it's smaller by 48 grams per mole. That's, that's significant in chemistry, okay? So please don't stress about it. So now we're done with the first question. Yay. Okay. Now, now we're going to remember stuff from grade 11. And we're like, oh, I don't remember. First of all, STP, which we'll talk about in a second. What volume of oxygen gas will be released at STP? STP, standard temperature and pressure. Okay, standard temperature pressure means standard temperature 0 degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. Standard pressure, 1 atmosphere. Why are they specifying STP? Because 1 mole of any gas at STP has a volume of 22,4 decimeters cubed. There is no exception to that. So... What I need to know is how many moles of oxygen do I have? Because if I know how many moles I've got, I can work out the volume. So, if I hadn't done part A, then the first up to here, where I get number of moles of potassium chlorate, would stay the same. Okay, I'd need to work out how many moles of potassium chlorate. But I've already got that. So, for B... I want to know the number of moles of oxygen. And that's going to be equal to the number of moles of potassium chlorate times by want over got. Okay, so now we go back to the equation and we go, well, what I want is the oxygen, which is a 3. What I've got is the chlorate, which is a 2. So now I'm going to have to go here and times this by 3 divided by 2. Okay, so I'm going to go 0 0.02 times by 3, divide by 2, and we get 0 0.03. Makes sense that we've got a bigger number because the balancing number is bigger, but they wanted molar volume. They wanted to know what the volume was. So now we've got to go back, and this is why we love information sheets, though I can't remember offhand grade 12s whether you've given this equation. Okay, so you just need to check your information sheets because it's not one we use very often. But the number of moles of any gas is the volume divided by molar volume at STP. Okay, we want the volume. We know that number of moles is 0, 0, 3. We want the volume. Molar volume is 22,4. Okay, so to get volume on its own, I'm going to end up going 0, 0, 3 times 22,4. Okay, and we're going to put that in our calculator. There, I've got the 0, 0,3 already times 22.4, and it gives me 0, 0,672 decimeters cubed. <laughs> Looks so simple, but it's quite long, but it's okay. We can do this. 
last part of the question. Yay. Now this one, I know some of you are going, I don't ever remember being told how to do this, but that's not true. How many oxygen atoms are released at STP? What? Okay, so this question requires us to remember Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number, which I don't remember the symbol for. So we're just going to write it out. Avogadro's number is equal to 6,02 times 10 to the 23. So remember, what Avogadro's number tells us is that if I have one mole of any substance, there will be 6,02 times 10 to the 23 particles. Okay? And I could have 6,02 times 10 to the 23 ions, molecules, atoms, electrons, whatever, people. No, we don't have that many. We'd never fit on the planet. Okay, grains of sand, marshmallows. In fact, I read somewhere that if we had to cover America with marshmallows, with 6,02 6, times 10 to 23 marshmallows, it would make a stack, I think, 10 kilometers high or something. Mm -hmm. It's a very big number. Okay, and it would take a long time to count to it, so don't try. Okay, so we want to know how many oxygen atoms are, how many oxygen atoms there are. So now we need to remember that oxygen is O2. So every, at, every molecule of oxygen has two atoms in it, okay? So one molecule, O2, gives us two oxygen atoms, okay? So if I have... In 0,02 moles of oxygen, I have twice as much, I have twice as many moles of oxygen atoms. Okay, that's moles of atoms. So, now if I want the number of oxygen atoms, I take the 0, 0,04 and I times it by Avogadro's number. Okay, so we're going to go 0 0.04 times 6.02 to the 23 and we get 2,408 times 10 to the 22 atoms. And now we don't. <laughs> Those are long questions, but they're nice questions. You're the only one who enjoys those questions. I know, so I know. Poor kids at school. I know. After that long question, we're going to take a quick ad break and we're coming back right after this. Mm -hmm.